Now, if you look at a simulation, for example, look towards the back, you'll see here a simulation. And the simulation has, the way it's set up, it has different kind of sections because it has these work tabs and it has situation tabs. So what's happening with these is you do the first 30, you go to the next 30, you go to the next 30, then you go to the simulation. With the simulation, when you click on this, it opens up a window. And when it opens up the window, in the simulation, it's going to kind of look like this, where you basically have here in the top, it's going to have, let's say, here's the clock. Then it's going to have a calculator, sheet, a vertical split, horizontal split, unsplit, done. Then here it has situations, directions, uh, authoritative pronouncements. Those are your FASBs. Resources. And then it has other questions. And these other questions have pencil icons. That means there's something for you to answer. There's something that's getting graded. Now, you've got this one, this one, this one, this one. Usually, this one over here is the research. This one is written communication. And then these are just, let's say, it could be a spreadsheet. It could be a bunch of C and E. Do you capitalize your expenses? Do you bubble it in? Now, as I said, the two simulations together are worth a total of 30 points. But of these, 20 points, 10 points here, 10 points here for each simulation. The other 10 points is for a written communication. Each one has a written communication, but this is important. One of them is worth 10 points. One of them is worth zero. It's thrown out. It's not 5 and 5. It's 0 and 10 or 10 and 0. That's an important thing to know. Why? Because by the time I get over here, this is multiple choice section, testlet 1, testlet 2, testlet 3, simulation 1, simulation 2. By the time I get here, I've already taken 50, 50, 50. I've taken almost three hours of exam. Two and a half hours. By the time I get here, I'm not nervous anymore. I'm fatigued, right? Who cares? I never wanted to be a CPA. I'm doing this for my parents. I don't even care. I should have married rich. Don't say that to your... Here, you're stuck. Keep working. Now, when you get to this, you're tired, fatigued. What do you do? Run a smart race. My suggestion to you, and this is invaluable information, do this first, because it could be worth 10% of your score. That written communication first. Now... What are they looking for? Basic, beginning, middle, and an end. Can you write in clear, understandable English? They're looking for, is it clear, concise, complete, use of standard English? Did you write on topic? Now, when you look at the back, you'll see examples of written communication. <clears throat> Basically, one of them here, it says, somewhere around like page 32 or so in the back, it says, Bayshore Industries Board of Directors consists mainly of Bayshore Industries family members with no training in accounting. To them, financing means borrowing money. Investing means putting money to the bank or stock market. They've asked you to write a memo to them explaining the terms investing and financing in a statement of cash flows. Then it says reminder. And the reminder is basically, and the reminder you can see in any of the written communication, reminder, your response is graded for both technical content and writing skills. Content is evaluated for information that is helpful to the intended reader and clearly relevant to the issue. Writing skills is evaluated for development, organization, and the appropriate expression of ideas in a professional correspondence. Use a standard business memo or letter format with a clear beginning, middle, and an end. Do not convey information in the form of a table, bullet point list, or other abbreviations. What does that mean? It means your communication is machine graded. The machine doesn't know how to read a chart, a graph, abbreviations, or bullet points. Don't put it in there. All it looks for is grammar and spelling. So it's looking for, you know when you get a Word document, you start typing, you get that red squiggly, it means you can't spell. You get the green squiggly, it means your grammar ain't so good. That's what they're looking for. They're also looking for the words. Did you write on topic? Not is the answer correct. But what did that question say? Investing and financing. That's all they're asking. So what words do you want to include in your answer? Basically, you want to copy and paste, but you can't do that. They disable that function. Why? Because they want you to put it in your own words. So what you're going to do is look at that. It says board of directors uh, consists of mainly base shores and families with no training. They're talking about cash flows, borrowing money, investing money. Dear Bayshore Industries, right, to and from. Dear Mr. Schmidt, 
Thank you very much for your question about a statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows has a variety of sections, including operating, investing, and financing activities. The investing and financing activities specifically include investing activities, which is, and, and then you go into the detail. Financing activities is, go into the detail. Doesn't have to be right, but include those words. Financing activity means borrowing money, right? If you borrow money, use those words. Investing activity means putting money into the bank or into stock markets. Yes, those are some of the things it includes. If you have any other questions about operating, investing, or financing activities or statement of cash flows, please, please feel free to contact me at 555-555-555. Sincerely, Roger. Beginning, middle, and an end, right? So beginning, basically tell them what you're going to tell them, tell it to them, tell them what you told them. But all they're looking for is grammar and spelling, and did you use those words on topic? That could be 10 points. Do that first. So I go, I do this first, then go back to this. Now, when you go back to these other parts, it's going to have different things. Maybe you'll click on here, and it's going to be a question where they want you to go through and do a statement of cash flows. They're going to have operating, investing, financing, and then you have another sheet where you have to pick. You have all these categories and all these dollar amounts. So you have to go through and drag and drop operating, investing, financing, and then over here, the dollar amounts. So I'm going to go through and work that out. You can also do and practice with the vertical and horizontal split because here's this and I want to have this here so I can kind of look at it this way or you can have it side by side. That's an important thing to function, to practice. That's why I gave you the software. Most importantly, go to this website to practice. The website is www.cpa-exam.org. Go to that website. That is the AICPA's website. That you want to go to a couple of days before. That is exactly the functionality of the simulation. They have one simulation for each part and five multiple choice questions for each part. So you can practice. That's where you play with it. I gave you software to practice with, but this is exactly, exactly like it. And again, practice with the split. Practice with the calculator function. Just, you know, here, I'm here to teach you accounting. Now you go home and learn it. Your job is then to get familiar with how it's going to be tested to you. That's where I suggest you spend a little bit of time in getting comfortable with that format the way it's set up. The key is study hard, don't get discouraged. Woo, do a little Michael Jackson walk. Come on down. I've been teaching almost 20 years after I left Deloitte & Touche. I've done this for many, many years, helped thousands and thousands of people accomplish their goal, which is to get through the exam.